What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Well, I say another video, it's been quite a long time. So apologies for not uploading for over a year now. Uh, I've been busy and I keep getting people messaging me, when are you coming back, when are you making more videos? Well, the answer is, I'm back, baby. and I am buzzing to be back. But the reason why, I sort of thought I'd jump on and I'd explain why, why I've been a bit a, uh, MIA. Uh, I've been really busy with work. Work has been crazy. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a professional videographer and photographer, um, and work has just blown up. I decided kind of to lean into it. Part of the YouTube thing was to get better at making videos, get more creative with photography and it worked and it helped pick me up loads and loads of work. So it's been, it's been crazy actually and, and I haven't really been able to keep up with it. Um, but I've become a bit more organised, a little bit quicker at editing and now I've got my system down to a T. It has allowed me to kind of step back into doing YouTube. And today we're going to talk about five things that you might not have thought about when shooting street photography. So when we're shooting street photography, it's very easy to get stuck to shooting umbrellas. They look great. Everyone knows they look great. But sometimes we need to think a little bit outside of the box. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to talk about five things that you may not have thought about when shooting street photography. And the first thing is colours. Now, colours does seem like an obvious thing, but hear me out. I've got a few things that you can look at that may help you improve your photography. So the first thing obviously is colours, but what we're going to talk about is three different things within colours that might help you. So the first one is when you are shooting, try and match your colours up. So if you're creating a set for Instagram, I know Instagram's evil, but hear me out. When you're creating your set for Instagram, maybe try and think of a thing. Maybe go all red or all blue or all yellow. For example, New York has amazing yellows. Maybe try and create a set that has yellows all throughout, just to be a little bit more artistic. Now, you've all heard of the colour wheel. One thing we can do is we can match opposites on the colours. That is uh, one way of creating aesthetically pleasing images. So not only can we use opposites on the colour wheel, we can always use analogous colours on the colour wheel, which is colours that are similar or close to each other. This, again, is aesthetically pleasing and can help you create more beautiful photography and street photography if we're being specific. Number two is storytelling. Now, this is one of my favourite things about photography because as street photographers, we can tell beautiful stories on the street, of what's happening now. And if we look back at classic photographers like Sol Leiter, he was telling stories 30, 40, 50 years ago of New York at that specific time. And we're now telling our story of this specific time. Try looking out for moments on the street that can tell a larger story, evoke emotion, and add like a little bit of mystery to your images. Try paying attention to people, moments, and those people interacting, the juxtaposition of different elements within your frames and the overall atmosphere of the environment. By capturing these storytelling moments, we can invite people to look at things in a deeper, more meaningful way, which will just add so much more to your photography. Give it a try. It's one of my favorite things about street photography. Number three is adding street art or graffiti into your images. Now, this is something I'm actually not that good at and something I'd like to get a lot better at. I've got a few images, I'll try and flash them up on the screen, but there are photographers out there who use hands off uh, like the, the graffiti and then pinching someone's head and things like that. And I think that's really interesting and it's something that personally I need to add into my photography and it's something that perhaps you can add into your photography to just make it a little bit more interesting. The visuals and the art of the street is all part of the story we're trying to tell. And by using those different elements, clever, can be really clever, uh, it, it's really good fun. I'm gonna try and find some more images and flash them up. Uh, I'll ask the photographers uh, if they mind and I'll, and I'll tag them uh, below. Number four is using layers and reflections. Now, it seems like an obvious one, but can we look a little bit further? I've got a video coming next week with Darren Sachs, and 
It's 15 questions with Darren Sachs, and he is maybe the best I know. So well, certainly he's the best that I know of adding layers and reflections and trying to do absolutely incredible stuff. So when that video is live, I recommend watching it. He'll explain how he gets his images, but there's a lot of waiting around, a lot of patience involved. But it's very clever, but I'll, I'll summarize. So basically what he does is he finds reflections. So that reflection could be, obviously a window is easy or a mirror, but can we use a mirror within a door handle or a door frame and can we reflect uh, a mirror and glass off each other or, or other elements like that to then get two reflections or three reflections even and then create so many different layers to your image. It's personally something that I like doing. I'm definitely not the best at it and it's something I'd like to get a lot better at. But if you can add that into your uh, repertoire of street photography, you're gonna take yourself to the next level. Number five, links in quite nicely to uh, the point number four of reflections. Um, and point number five is abstracts. So we can create abstract street photography with reflections. So they are together, but we can also create abstracts by using textures, by different angles. We can even flip the images over on top of each other. Sometimes that can create a really interesting image. Think about how you can use natural framing we have within a street. Think about how you can use the geometry of buildings. Think about how you can use, like I said, reflections. And a good one, for example, is using a reflection off the floor. One of my favorite photos is by Hugo Stage 5, where he's shooting down into a puddle, which is reflecting up against uh, a really cool picture. And what he's basically done is created a beautiful bit of art. And I will flash the image up now. So yeah, there's loads of different things we can do with abstracts. Um, Sol Lighter was really good at this. He used shoot through windows, which is one of my favorite things to do. You can use different textures, like I say, like this image I got in New York, for example. I've shot through, I think it was a telephone box. I focused on the uh, the drips or the raindrops, if you like, of, on, on the actual uh, phone box. And then through the image, you can see people walking towards me with an umbrella. And it's just, it just creates a kind of more mysterious image. And for me, uh, adding mystery to street photography is uh, it's just one of my favorite things to do. Right guys, if you've got to the end of this video, you are a legend. Uh, it's been a while, I feel very rusty. Hopefully I've done all right and hopefully I've given you a little bit of wisdom that you'll be able to take forward into your next street photography venture. Um, if you've got any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below, happy to answer. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at NJMFlix. I also have now created a film photography account which is at NJM Flicks uh, on film. All the links are in the description. Uh, like I said, questions, comment. Uh, I think that's about it. See you in the next one. Peace.